Okay, John again here this year. So we're going to do it again, which is this time we're going to do a a uh, hydro gear. This is a hydro gear T2 A A B C 1 X 1 A 1 G X 1. And this came off of a craftsman, a craftsman uh, lawn tractor YT3000. I've had it for about four years now. The reason that I was concerned was we have a hill in the back and the house is built on a wetland. It was raised up, the ground was raised up around it. But in the back there's a ravine and the ravine would go down to where the wetland is presently and the pond at the bottom of it. So I'd mow up and down this ravine and for the last four years, and even the guy at Sears says, you know, it's going to get overheated sometimes and will fail. Well, it hasn't failed, actually, but we make a lot of noise when it's under load. And over the last winter, I was actually using this YT3000 to move snow around, too. I had this attachment in the front, you know, from Arbor Agrifo map. But anyway, so this year I decided, since last year I did the tough torque, and even here's the tough torque, uh, super cute, uh, super cute uh, cradle. I was very pleased with it. So I decided just to modify it a little bit so it could be used to take apart this hydro gear. So this hydro gear, you know, instead of opening from the bottom and taking a, you know, what, uh, uh, a part off to see the innards. This one you take it apart laterally. So this is one side, and then when you take it apart, you'll see one side, and here's the other side. So they bolt together, but they bolt together in the middle. And what you see here is that here's, when you open it up, you'll see a what we call a bowl gear, which is just a gear that all the power goes through. And then here's some reduction gears, and then here is the action. It's not uh, large, so they they need an economy of space here. So they got to just stuff everything to a small, as small as possible area. But it works. I mean, this thing has been good to me. Now, how does this thing work? Well, here's the input shaft uh, area anyway. The input shaft is here, and it would go away like that. And then you can see that after it got in here, here's the swash plate. Here's the swash plate controller right here. And then here's the swash plate which go one way or the other. And then here is the pump that goes under the swash plate. So when the when this spins here, then when the input shaft spins, then you'll have the you'll have the pump that's gonna turn. And that's going to start a flow pattern, especially under the swash plate. If the swash plates turn one way or the other, you start having flow from the pump into the center case area. The center case area is here. Center case. And then the center case will go into a motor. Now the motor is actually way down under there. I know you can't see it too well, but you know, that's where it is. And then that motor is actually pushed against the wall of the case. There's a little area where there's a off to an angle uh, incline that the pump will make contact with through its races and bearings. Uh, and then after that, when the center case feeds the fluid into the pump area, the pump will then uh, go one way or the other, push fluid uh, around the pump, around the motor, and the motor then will turn and it will turn this this here, the, sha the output shaft, which will then turn these reduction gears and give you power to the wheels. Okay? So that's how it works. You know, here is the center case where all the action happens. Here is the part that attaches to the pump. And you can see A, it's uh, 
way in which the flow goes. A again goes from one side, the pump side, to the motor side. Here's the motor side. And the motor side will, if you push fluid from one, this will actually turn, cause the motor to turn in a certain direction, which then will get the gears moving. So this is just fluid mechanics, which I have no degree in, by the way. But uh, anyway, so A goes to A again, just like last year. And then you can tell this is the motor side because right up in there is the bypass pop-up valve, if you will. You can see that just pops out like that. Very nice. Again, it goes right into this area. Just like that. And so that's what it is. Here's the filter, not a not very robust. But uh, and then at the bottom of the filter is the round object, which is actually the magnet. See the magnet, that round little thing. Nice little magnet, and then there's the screen, and under the screen are the, some uh, pressure relief valves, which you know are good, but nothing major. You know, just pressure relief. So you don't want things to explode if the, you know the the pistons on either the pump or the motor fail, but uh, it's not going to happen. Something else would give. Anyway, that's what that is. Now, again, in order to take this apart, it's not anything major here. It's just, you know, you have to just remove things. Uh, one thing that would kind of su surprise me here was this little thing. It's the top pulley area in order to really take this bolt off because there's no other way to do it you have to actually put a you have to put a uh, small screwdriver through this hole and through this hole too to stabilize it as you spin it around to try and loosen that nut that's the only thing that was a little concerning there. That's something I hadn't really done before. The other thing is when you have to take the swash plate off in order to get a new pump arrangement in there. And, and this was the thing that kind of bothered me, was that I couldn't really take any sort of a... And it was stuck here. It was stuck. I just couldn't get it out. And I said, you know, there must be something in there that's keeping it, but there was, it wasn't. It just has to be pressed out. It was really uh, covered with a lot of gunk. So when I finally got it out of there, I cleaned it all off with a brush. And that, but once you get the swash plate out, you push it this way, and the swash plate comes out this way. Okay, and then, then you can put your new uh, pump in there, your new pump in there, and then you can slide the pump on with the swash plate on top of your case. So and actually what you do then in reassembly of this, you take it all out of course, and you pray that you'll ever be able to get it all back together, but you can. So what you do is take it all out, and then the first thing that goes back in is the two washers, which have a groove in them called races, and a, uh, the bearing. The small uh, washer goes in first, the bearing, and then the larger washer or race goes in. It's on an incline on a little indentation in the back of this case, and then after that you put in the motor. The larger of these two is the motor. You put in the motor, you put slide this thing sideways because in order for this thing in order for this thing to go in right, you can't there's not enough space to to push it like that. You can't just everything just falls out. And there's no room to keep your fingers in here in order to try and keep these pistons from falling out. So you just put it sideways. So you put it on your side, 
then after that, when it's all on there, then you can put the the center case thing in and put put this put the put these uh, screws in loosely, and then uh, then you can make sure that these the pistons from the pump pistons from the motor actually are still squeezable, as you will. And then after that, when this is when that's in, and these are kind of loose, then you can kind of get the